Hello everyone, your full stack amigo here. Welcome to another video of a deeper look. In this video, I'm gonna show you a lot of tricks that you can do with tuples, including a new way for writing constructors, testing object equality, swapping variables, and deconstructing objects. But before we get into them, I will tell you what a tuple is, why we need them, and how we can use them. So if you want to skip ahead, the links are in the description below. So without further ado, let's dig in. Here we have a person class with four properties, ID, first name, last name, and age. We have also a constructor for initialization. Here we have a list of people and a method to find a person with its ID and returns last name of that person and age of him. In our main method, we just like the last name and age of that person. Here we just needed age and last name. If we were interested in the first name and maybe the ID, we would return the person itself because we needed all of its properties. But when we need just a few of them, we have to create another type that includes the properties that we need or we use out parameters to return multiple variables using out parameters has a few limitations for example async methods cannot accept out parameters so in these kind of methods we have two options the first one is that we create another class that includes our properties and return that class from this method or we can use tuples Tuples are a new data structure that can hold a few properties in them. Here in our main method we want to find the person with ID 1 and we will log last name and age of that person. Now let's change this to use tuple. First we remove out parameters. After that we change the return type to tuple. Tuple is a class in system namespace. We specify a string as the first property of it and an integer as the next one. And in the method we no longer need this one. And here we return a new tuple. And we pass in last name and age of that person. In the main method we change this last name to tuple. So the question is how do we access these properties? The properties in the tuple are named sequentially and their name starts with its item. So we have tuple.item1 and tuple.item2. Another thing that I want to mention is that tuple properties are immutable so you cannot change the value of these properties also tuples are class so this will add overhead to our codes instead of classes we can use a struct and in .NET we have a value tuple which is the struct version of tuple this will remove a lot of overhead but keep in mind value tuples are not immutable because the values are stored in fields instead of properties so we can change them and we get no compiler error. In C Sharp 7, Microsoft decided to add language level support for tuples. So now we can change this value tuple to parentheses. And this will act the same way. And with this new syntax, we can also change the name of what we are returning from here. And in the main method, we can also change this to last name and age. Now it's a lot more readable, but we are not finished yet. We can also change the names from here. And we can change the name of the fields to whatever we want. We can also remove this tuple from here. And this is called tuple deconstruction. Now all of these are variables instead of fields of a tuple. 
and nowadays we usually don't specify type for variables so we can change these to var and even more simply we can remove this var and this var and add a var here now you tell me out parameters or tuples I think it is not hard to decide let's see another cool use case we usually have something like this in our codes when we have a selected statement and we try to return an anonymous object since we cannot specify type for anonymous types we cannot return this to a color but we can simply change this anonymous type to a tuple and return it just like this now it is much more readable and much more beautiful there are a few other awesome tricks that we can do with tuples but before we get into them please subscribe to my channel and enable the notification bell so you will be notified whenever a new video is available now let's get back to our person class did you notice these hidden areas here we have the construct methods in the previous video I have covered everything about object deconstruction what I want to add to it is that we can remove this deconstruct method and have a utility class to have that method in the extension way so this is an extension method for deconstructing the person now let's see what is object deconstruction here we can have a person and we assign it to a variable now we can deconstruct this person to a tuple with first name last name and age using this syntax as you can see we have first name last name and age and this is only possible through a deconstruct method it doesn't matter whether it is an extension method or it is in the class itself you can use whatever you like another thing that we can do is nested tuples so we can have a value here and another tuple inside it and this works fine another cool thing is that the two string method of tuples returns the tuple itself as an string now it's time for some more cool stuff here I have a point type let's start with its constructor we usually initialize our properties with this syntax but we can change this with tuples with tuples we just create a tuple of x and y and assign new x and y to this now we are talking now you are ready for something that blows your mind one of the first things we learn in programming is to swap variables we create a temp variable we assign the first variable to it we assign the second variable to the first variable and then we assign our temp to our second variable i remember it was not the easiest thing to do when i learned programming but now everything has changed let's remove all of these make this expression body method create a tuple of x and y here and assign y and x to it wow now it's beautiful easy more readable and i love this syntax so let's do more equality can be made much simpler with tuples here i have implemented i equitable and all of the equals methods so we have the equals methods from object class and I have overloaded these operators in all of these methods 
you are just calling the equals. Let's see what is in equals. We simply check if our x is equal to the x of the other point and our y is equal to the y of the other point. We can remove all of these and just do x y equals equals p dot x and p dot y now it's compact more readable and more beautiful but keep in mind the equality in tuples is different from equality in classes and structs in classes and structs we have to implement equals method but in tuples the equality begins from comparing the first variables and going onward if any of these variables is not equal it will short circuit and improves performance now tell me in the comments did you know all of these do you want to use them in your codes do you like these modern tricks if you want to see more of these please tell me in the comments like this video and share it with your friends thanks for watching and until next time adios amigos